hi my name is Paige welcome to my channel so it has been a couple weeks since I uploaded and I think if you are a returning visitor to my channel then you might understand why because this is not my normal backdrop so these past couple of weeks I have been working on this new library of mine which I am officially introducing to you um, I have been at Troy's graduation insert pictures here I have been doing early holiday stuff. It's just been really crazy. Finals are over now and so I'm on um, break until the next semester, but I knew I definitely had to film this November wrap up. So this isn't the video where I'm gonna give you a tour of these bookshelves um, because they actually are pretty disorganized right now. I mean, they're brand new. So, uh, but I will have that video coming eventually for this video. I just wanted to let you know the books that I read during November. There were six of them, so I did a really good job in my opinion, <laughs> reading this month. So before I get started, I wanted to quickly just thank my family for making this library possible. So my grandparents, my mom, uh, Troy, obviously he was the one that basically built all these for me. I mean, he just didn't have the patience to watch me with the little nails trying to hammer them in one by one. So he basically did all of them for me. And my cousins, Paul and Jacob, for like carrying all this because I was not capable, they were super heavy. I just wanted to warn you that I am in a new space so there are some unaccounted for noises and just extra things that will be worked out in time so if you can hear background noise, I'm sorry. Um, I will try to make my voice as audible as possible but yeah. Anyway, the first book that I read in November, I finished it I think the first of November so I actually was aiming to finish this during October because it's kind of like a spooky... Um, October Halloween read, but I finished The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I follow her on Instagram because I've read some of her other books and I like her work and so when she announced that she was coming out with this at like the beginning of the year I was really excited because it is um, a vampire tale. So this is a young adult historical fiction fantasy sort of. It follows a girl named Celine Rousseau who um, is a French person and she comes over to America, specifically New Orleans, in 1872 to kind of like find a marriage, like a suitor in New Orleans, an American suitor. Um, so she comes over with like a bunch of other girls, very unique personalities from other places in Europe and uh, she kind of like becomes friends with them and they explore New Orleans together and all that stuff. She also like carries a lot of baggage with her from France, uh, so not getting into specifics about that but yeah she she carries a lot of history there and she's like escaping from something and having these friendships with these girls and exploring this like new world is really exciting and scary and just all kinds of things for her. So basically the problem of the book is that um, there is a serial killer in New Orleans who is targeting young girls and they set their sights on Celine eventually and she kind of finds herself aligned with the uh, Le Corps de Lyons. So this is like an organization of like questionable people or so the city people say um, of just like interesting and talented and rich wealthy New Orleans people uh, that she finds herself involved with and in being involved with that group she finds herself involved with Sebastian Saint Germain. So I will always have sort of a soft spot for vampire myth retelling stories because I mean I did grow up with Twilight um, but I also kind of just wanted this because I am into Interview with a Vampire and, and Renee Aldier did really just like does something really interesting with that like myth um, if you know what I'm talking about with this specific book then comment below let me know what you thought of it I thought it was pretty interesting I enjoyed the book overall I think I gave it like four stars like 4.5 something in between there finished it really really fast so obviously I enjoyed it. Um, the tension, the romantic tension was really good. I really like the fact that um, Celine is a like an established seamstress so she comes from France with all this like knowledge and expertise in like sewing and making clothes and like throughout the book like that passion and that like hobby of hers is always present and she's always working on a project and talking about it so I like the fact that she has that depth to her and overall I really liked all the characters. I was a little bit disappointed and confused by the ending because I think it's setting up for a sequel and if that's the case like just what happened at the end I was like why? <laughs> but hey you know I would still recommend this 
um, just because I really like her writing and to prove how much I like her writing I decided to read two of her other books like immediately after but we'll talk about that in a second. So before we get into the other two books that I read of Renee Adier, let's talk about the two in between those other two. So the first one that I read after The Beautiful was The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. I never got to do an official wrap-up of my reading of the, um, the Name of the Wind because I read it during a month where that was the only book that I finished, so I didn't do an official wrap-up because it just felt silly to do it with one book. But if you heard me talking about it, I think I talked about it a little bit in like my um, Renaissance Festival vlog, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, if you don't know what The Name of the Wind is, uh, it is so far a duology. A third book is coming out in the series. It's a high fantasy adult series. It's very, very popular, well known. It's kind of like idolized in the fantasy community and I've always been curious about it because of the like the way that people just ch like love it and I can understand now. Uh, so basically it follows a man named Quoth who is telling his story um, like so it goes through his entire life basically and um, it switches between third person and first person like third person when um, they kind of like jump out of the story and he's like in present day and he's like sort of doing present things and then uh, most of the book is in first person when he's like telling the story and it's just so good. The problem with I think a lot of high fantasy novels is that it's hard for people to jump in. I'm, I'm personally a, a fan of fantasy, that's primarily what I read, so like I'm used to sort of a lot of verbiage in fantasy novels that are that's unfamiliar to me or just like world specific vocabulary, so I'm used to that, but a lot of people don't like certain fantasy novels because they like overdo it. And I can say confidently that The Name of the Wind doesn't do that at all. Patrick Rothfuss is so good at just introducing this whole entire world and culture, multiple cultures in these characters to you without like shoving unnecessary vocabulary down your throat that like doesn't matter and just will confuse you. He just has a really straightforward but really like easy way of writing. I listened to both of these books on audiobook which I'm super happy that I did because the uh, narrator is really really good so if you are looking into uh, listening to the audiobook then I definitely recommend it. I will say since I'm specifically talking about the wise man's fear in this video, um, I there was definitely like a big shift between the first book and the second book which you would expect since it is following like his entire life you would you would expect that like kind of shift but it was definitely um, a little jarring for me. I think because in the first book, Quoth is so young, he's like a kid to like early teen, and like in the second book, he's more so mid late teens. And um, obviously with like adolescence, there's a lot of m like maturing going on there and just like things happened, it seemed really fast and I just like wasn't prepared for all of that stuff, if you know what I'm talking about, then maybe you felt the same way. I just felt like uncomfortable for for a large majority of the book until eventually I kind of like accepted it, but at the same time I like missed that old both, if you know what I mean. Either way, I gave this book five stars. I gave both of them five stars because I think that I can say it's in my top three of fantasy novels. I mean, it's it's actually superb. There, everything is excellently written. The plot is flawless. Everything was so thought out. It's just, it's incredible to see a an author succeed so brilliantly at planning a plot like that. So um, yeah, still five stars. I just wanted to throw in that bit about being uncomfortable because it is a, it's, it's a bit of a difference. So if you are going into the wise man's sphere, having read The Name of the Wind, be prepared for that. And also be prepared for the fact that the third book isn't out yet. So um, there are talks going on about TV shows or movies for this book series, but I mean, I don't think that can happen until the third book comes out, and I'm not sure when that's gonna happen, so kind of sad right now. I'm living in a world without both, at least any new material from him, so. Okay, next up, and this is a book that I actually started months ago. I started this book when I was reading uh, Crazy Rich Asians and I didn't finish either of them, but my friend is really into this book. So it is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is a contemporary fantasy 
that's really all I can say about it. Paranormal romance, sort of. So this is set in Oxford because the protagonist, Diana Bishop, is a historian and she's doing research in the Bodleian Library? Bodleian? You know. Uh, and so she's studying alchemy and in doing that she uncovers this like secret manuscript and because of this manuscript that's like related to uh, magical kind because she is a witch uh, it attracts like all of these magical people uh, that was badly explained but basically a bunch of daemons daemons demons whatever vampires and um, witches show up to ask what the heck that was about and see, uh, you know, how she uncovered this lost manuscript and all of that. And um, in all this happening, she ends up meeting a vampire named Matthew Claremont. I'm a little mixed up about this book because there are some elements of this book that I really, really, really liked and some of it I just didn't like at all. So for example, um, I love the way that they kind of, um, Deborah Harkness sort of brings the scientific into the supernatural. I love the way that she explains DNA and how that affects and uh, works with the magical traits and there's a whole lot of discussion about that because Matthew Claremont is a scientist and so he talks about it a lot and uh, Darwinism is discussed and uh, just historical periods in time are talked about a lot and it's really interesting because at some point uh, they go to France and spoiler at some point they go to America so you kind of get all of those different like uh, plots and different um, histories and characters and that's really interesting. I really really like that about this book. What I didn't like about this book surprisingly even though this is um, highly romantic it is paranormal romance to the T. I did not like the romance. I, I just don't think I like the romantic interest and um, that's unusual for me. Usually I kind of like go along with it but I just am not feeling that romance at all. I'll put up a spoiler warning here so that if you don't want to know about this you don't have to but I felt like that strength in Diana that like I admired and like the strength and self-discovery that she was working towards was like sort of I don't know just like eliminated because of her like new relationship and like it happened so fast you know like they're basically married and she was being super rude to her aunts and like I don't know it just felt like he came into her life and like her whole center focus just like shifted and like her whole like core values like I don't know it just felt really strange and I just didn't like it I didn't like him that much in fact I got really strong Twilight vibes um, and if I'm gonna get Twilight vibes I'd rather just read Twilight I mean I have nostalgic value with Twilight and at least when Edward does something very possessive and weird, he feels guilty for it. It just felt like Matthew never felt guilty for being just weird and... I don't know. I just, yeah, I did not feel that. So, I'm doing spoiler here. I'm not sure if I want to read the second book. The way this book ended, I could see myself being a little interested in the second book, but I don't know if I'm going to read it or not because I've heard mixed views on how the series progresses. I've heard people say that it gets better as it goes on and I've heard people say that like not to bother. So um, if you have an opinion about that, feel free to let me know. I don't know. Should I continue? I don't know. I just don't know. I believe on Goodreads I gave that like four stars, maybe 3.5. Uh, I was just so mixed up about it. I wasn't really sure what rating to give it. So that's as close as I could get. Okay, moving on to the rest of my Rene Adier month. So, I finally finished Smoke in the Sun. So, I was a big fan of Flame in the Mist. Um, I finished it like that. I, in fact, I liked it so much that I was almost scared to continue on because I was afraid I wasn't going to like this second book as much as I loved the first one. Uh, going in, like going into it, I knew that I was a sucker for like Mulan retellings, even though when people say that this series is a retelling of Mulan, that's really not accurate. Uh, for one, I mean, this series is set in like feudal Japan and <sighs> Mulan was Chinese, so like that is quite a bit of a difference and like after the initial um, she disguises herself as a boy and all that, like a lot of things are different in this series. So like not really a Mulan telling, just like 
maybe lightly inspired by Mulan, but I knew going into it that I already had that disposition to like it, and I was so right because all the things that Renee Adier added to this story that weren't in Mulan and like just unique things about this story in particular made it so much better and just it's great. For a short synopsis on Flame in the Mist, since I won't do like a synopsis on this uh, continuation, basically it's about a girl named Mariko who is traveling from her hometown uh, or her home village to the capital where she is expected to marry uh, into royalty. So she's on her way and then her like party gets ambushed by these bandits and they think that they've killed her but they haven't and so she escapes into the woods and she decides that she's going to investigate why this clan she perceives to be a clan like came after her and tried to kill her so she disguised herself and she goes on the hunt uh, to investigate this like weird clan and just it's just so it's just so good it's great i think the way that renee adier writes is just really appealing to me her dialogue is just so good and i've noticed that continuously every time i read her book i think to myself wow i don't think i could have written this any better for a lot of other books um, that i read uh, even though even if i love them i think at certain parts man maybe i could have like worded this differently or i would have worded this differently and when i read her books i just think that everything that she writes, at least dialogue-wise, is perfect. It's it absolutely fits the situation. It's 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 catchy. It's like snide. I don't know. It's always the perfect thing to say, and I really love her for that. And I was not disappointed with this book. I will say that if you are continuing the duology, that I didn't like this book as much as the first one, but I still gave it like 4.5 stars. And the reason why I didn't like this one as much is because there's a lot of supernatural elements that are at play in this book specifically and just like a lot of magic that is just I think too unexplained for my taste like for the amount of underlying magical themes in this book there wasn't enough explanation or enough focus on them for them to be really important or just sort of interesting so I think that kind of fell flat for me but Everything else like I was impressed with and I was happy to see the conclusion of the story. So you might already have guessed the other two books that I read this month, but yeah, I did read Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger. So if you follow me on Goodreads, which you should because I, I update as regularly as I can, I even update which page I'm on. I could get better about posting status updates, but I think I'll improve on that in time. I read this book last year also, I think, maybe even two years ago, and um, I did like it. I think something fell flat for me, I'm not sure what it was, but at the time it just wasn't a good, I don't know, it just wasn't a good time to read it, so like I ended up reading this and then I was like, mm, and I never read the second book even though I got it right after. Again, same situation. So I put this book down and I like stopped thinking about it and then Webtoon came out with a webcomic that's based off of this duology and I read the first chapter and I thought to myself, wow, like I was thinking back to me reading this book and I was rem remembering how much I liked the relationship in it and I thought to myself like why did I not finish that and I just had this huge craving to come back to the series and finally finish it. So. I didn't want to do it the wrong way, like I didn't want to just jump straight into the sequel because I knew that there were some parts of the first book that I was forgetting or just like not appreciating as much, so I read the first book again and loved it just as much, even more because it was just the right time to read it for me. If you don't know what this book is about, it's a, it's another one of her young adult duologies. It's a retelling of one of these stories in Arabian Nights, so it follows a girl named Shazi, that's her nickname, uh, she loses her best friend because her best friend is chosen to be the new wife of the caliph, um, the basically the emperor, and the emperor kills his wife every single night, so he chooses a new bride every day, and by sunrise they die, mysteriously. Uh, they are executed. I guess that's not really mysterious, but basically the reasoning is mysterious. So to get revenge on the caliph, uh, Shazi decides to infiltrate the capital. She comes in as his new bride and she vows to herself that she's going to last the night. And so her tactic is to tell him a story 
um, and get him like interested and I don't know leave him with a plot twist so he can't kill her and you know whatever so that's like the plot line of these two books and obviously the reason why he's killing his brides is like it's like the mystery that you need to solve in the first book and the mystery that like haunts you because you want to like him you want to like Khaled his name is you want to love him but you also don't understand why he's doing the things that he's doing some people have said that there is a love triangle in these books and to some some extent I guess that's right sort of but it's done it's done tastefully and it's like you know the second book really kind of wraps that up and makes it like makes it livable for you as a reader for them as the characters and it was actually a, a pleasant experience to see that come to the finale and get to see the way that they all end up living their lives and um i just love to see uh the protagonist i love to see shazi really like take her take the reins on her life and uh kind of you know if you've read this book then you know exactly uh, in what ways she kind of discovers herself and I enjoyed every moment of it. So my favorite part about this second book is a character named Artan. Artan. Uh, if you know who I'm talking about then hopefully you loved him as much as I did. I'm secretly hoping that she decides to expand on this universe and maybe even go in his perspective and write a whole new duology or a series because there's so much left to tell about his family and his life and just his story in general. He was a really refreshing uh, character because I this this series is so so good um, and it partially is because the characters are so serious like the drama is just constantly happening and I feel like he was a welcome comedic relief as well as just like a like a spice of like color I don't know he was really really enjoyable to me so if you felt the same way feel free to let me know but yeah he was definitely one of my favorite parts of this second book so this was basically a Renee Adier month because I read four of her books yeah four of the six books I read in November were her books all right I don't want this video to drag on too long and now that I am done wrapping up my books uh, I just want to quickly fill you in on what I'm trying to read now. So I am getting through Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, uh, getting pretty far into it. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, surreal, magical. It's interesting so far. Uh, I'll let you know more about that next, well, I guess it is December. So I, yeah, I'll let you know at the end of this month. And I'm, I also finished uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Really enjoyed it. I still think I'm still thinking about it. I'm still processing that. I uh, can't wait to talk to you about it later. And I'm also working through Ninth House by Leah Bardugo. Uh, it's blowing me away. Very very happy that she finally decided to come out with an adult novel, adult fantasy novel, and I'm very excited to see the continuation of this series because it is superb. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great great month. Um, sorry that we're so late in De into December now and I'm just now telling you what I read in November, but I'm sure you guys have been busy too and with the holidays coming, we're just about to get busier, but I am ex I am looking forward to filming more videos for you. I want to talk about more um, holiday themed books that are coming up that I want to read and just like different tags and stuff like that. If you have a holiday TBR, winter, Christmas, whatever TBR, please actually tell me what you're planning to read. I have a few books in mind that I want to read for the holiday season, but I'm just not sure which books I want to devote myself to yet. And um, to be honest, we're almost to the end of December, so I don't have a lot of time to read uh, holiday themed books. So I want to pick as well as I can. So if you have any suggestions for that, please let me know. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I hope you enjoy my new library and I hope that uh, I can give you that tour soon. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I will see you soon. Bye.